Hi everyone, so let's now check out the Laffer Curve. Now, the Laffer Curve is a very, very useful tool in helping us to understand how different tax rates can really affect incentives within an economy. That is, incentives to go to work and actually engage in economically productive activities. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, so the Laffer Curve illustrates the relationship between tax rates and the amount of tax revenue collected by governments. We can see it here starting at a, uh, a tax rate of 0% here, right up to 100%. Meanwhile, we can see the revenue, the tax revenue that is actually collected by the government as a result of the imposition of this taxation policy. Now, we can see, therefore, correspondingly, this curve. This curve obviously reaches the highest point of tax revenue, that is tax receipts by the government, somewhere in the middle of uh, this spectrum that we have here. Okay, so we can see that very nicely there. Meanwhile, we can also see a 100% uh, rate of tax results in zero revenue because there are just no incentives to actually undertake work because all of your work will be handed straight over to the government. Uh, now what's also interesting is that as you move beyond a certain boundary, the Laffer curve, and Art Laffer and his, uh, his theory, really suggests that if you continue to increase tax rates, then it will actually reduce employment and economic uh, productivity which is carried out in a given period. So you can see that which is reflected by that falling tax revenue and this prohibitive area, an area where you do not want to actually place your taxes in. Let's just take a, uh, a midpoint within this pro prohibited area, then you can see here reducing that level of taxation would actually bring about an increase in tax receipts. So tax revenue earned by the government would increase through those tax cuts. So we can see that happening all the way down to this peak point, of course. Now, what we can also see at the lowest spectrum, of course, is how uh, tax revenue greatly increases as tax is just increased a, a little bit. Uh, so a small increase in tax uh, really does bring about a big increase in the amount of tax revenue generated. Now after all, Art Laffer was a supply side, a classical type of economist. So he was very free market orientated, didn't really like big governments. So uh, yeah, we can see his principle in action there. And really what he's suggesting is that there is a real opportunity to actually reduce taxes to encourage economic output. Uh, now. Well, let's have a look quickly at some of the uh, positives of using this. Uh, so firstly, it helps us to highlight uh, the importance of tax rates and tax revenues. So it's one thing talking about tax rates, uh, but simply increasing tax rates doesn't mean that tax revenues will necessarily increase. After all, the extremely wealthy have an ability to actually transfer uh, their status, transfer their ownership, perhaps between different houses that they own in different countries and so on. So they can alter their legal status, if you like, and that can influence those tax revenues at the highest level. Um, and again, we see that on this, this curve. A, a good example, perhaps, of this was when Gordon Brown introduced the 50% tax rate on the highest income earners beyond £150,000. Uh, that subsequently led to a fall in tax revenue generated by that particular group. George Osborne subsequently reduced that tax rate to 45% and the actual tax revenue increased. So there's a nice example to uh, consider in line with that. So it's nice and simple to understand uh, and it illustrates the importance of tax rates and incentives of course. Uh, but finally, there is a downside, of course, that it relies upon very, very simple uh, assumptions here. You can see that we are dealing with uh, just one rate of taxation, but of course, economies have lots and lots of different types of taxation which is imposed upon their, 
uh, citizens and what's more is that they have those different marginal rates of taxation depending upon those income levels as well as of course other examples like indirect taxation and value added tax, road tax etc. So really it's not as simple as this suggests because really this is assuming one rate of uh, taxation uh, and it's far more complex than that. But nonetheless, a useful model in helping us to understand that relationship between tax rates and revenues and the importance of uh, getting a tax level at a right level which isn't prohibitive to incentives. Okay, thanks guys.